When you retrack a roller coaster, the intention is to make the ride smoother. And 99% of the time, rides do in fact get smoother after they're retracked. But what about the other 1%? Well, that 1% is known as Wildcat Lake Compounds. The coaster received all new trains and track work in 2017, but the coaster unfortunately rides rougher than ever now. In this video, I'll be reviewing Wildcat and explaining why this classic coaster is one of the worst wood coasters in the world. Wildcat was designed by Herb Schmeck of the Philadelphia Toboggan Coasters and it opened in 1927. However, the ride has been retracked several times over the years. The ride was completely rebuilt by the DIN Corporation in 1985, and then the coaster was retracted in 1998, shortly after the park was purchased by the Kennywood Corporation. And most recently, the entire coaster was again retracted in 2017. I have been riding Wildcat for two decades. It has always been a rough ride. But the work done to the coaster in 2017 somehow made the coaster worse than ever. Martin and Flamengs performed this full retracking, and the coaster also received two new Millennium Flyer trains from GCI. Not only does Wildcat track worse than ever, but its already low capacity got even worse. The old PTC trains seat 18 riders, while the new trains seat just 14 riders. This coaster routinely is one of the longest lines in all of Lake Compounds. The ride only runs one train at a time. Combine that with the short trains and decent ride time, and you have a recipe for a slow moving line. If all the station switchbacks are filled, which is a common occurrence even on a weekday, Wildcat's line will take about a half hour, and quite simply, it is not worth a half hour wait. It is even worth half that. Wildcat is a coaster I rarely ride due to the dismal capacity and brutal ride experience. And it really is a shame how Wildcat turned out. Wildcat long had a reputation as a brutal ride. Lake Compounds invested a sizable sum of cash into the coaster for the 2017 season, enough to buy an all new coaster, but Wildcat instead got worse. Before 2017, the coaster ran three bench PTC trains. The first two rows offered tolerable rides. At best, Wildcat was rideable, but boring. However, the wheel seats in those old trains were nasty. I remember one back row ride as a kid where Wildcat drew blood from my dad. He hated that ride. But ever since 2017, there is no longer a single enjoyable seat in Wildcat. Every seat is a disaster. I usually love Millennium Flyers, but these trains cannot save this ride. In fact, they're used as instruments of pain. Unlike the old PTC trains or even the older Millennium Flyers that had soft cushion seats, these Millennium Flyers have the hard foam seats. These are less forgiving as Wildcat shuffles down the track. You are not able to absorb the bumps. You also get pain from the lap bar. Millennium Flyers use T-bars so your legs can bang against the central bar as the train shimmies down the track. Compare this to the old PTC trains that operate with forgiving buzz bars. And the poor track work is evident from the start. Wildcat has a slow approach to the lift hill, and even this stretch of track is shaky, which is shocking considering you're not going faster than 5 miles per hour. You then head up the 85 foot or 26 meter tall lift hill, which is sadly the best part of the ride. Since Wildcat is in the center of the park, the lift offers some nice views of the whole park. Plus, it's about the only smooth part of the ride. The first drop is 78 feet or 24 meters tall. With the old trains, it was possible to get a little bit of airtime on this drop in the back car. With the new trains, you get zero airtime. And to bury the hatchet, Wildcat has zero airtime. Despite featuring a double out and back layout with countless bunny hills, None of them have any airtime. It is impressive in the worst way possible. Now I'm dead serious when I say this, you get more airtime on the road driving into lake compounds than you do on Wildcat. The pullout from the first drop is admittedly smooth, but don't get used to that. Every other valley in Wildcat will beat you up. The first turnaround is the shallow, drawn out turnaround. Due to the lack of banking, you get a tiny bit of laterals traversing this element but that leads into the worst part of the ride, the first bunny hill. This bunny hill has an abrupt kink to the right at the apex, so you are violently jolted to the side. Combine that with the non-stop jackhammering, and this is one of the world's worst elements on any coaster. 
I have PTSD just thinking about this element. The following bunny hill tracks just as poorly, but at least it's straight so it doesn't have that lateral jolt, it just has traditional jackhammering. You then traverse another drawn out turnaround. You get some gentle laterals at the top, but that's followed by three more bunny hills. The first two gradually bank to the left so they combine some painful lateral jolts with the standard shuffling. The third is thankfully straight but still very shaky. You then navigate another slow turnaround and head over two final bunny hills. And the weird thing with this ride's layout is that the final two bunny hills are taller than the ones earlier in the ride. So not only are they comically slow and free of airtime, but the valleys provide bad jolts as well. You then rise up into the brake run and Wildcat of course ends with a hard stop that'll slam you forwards. It's only fitting for Wildcat to knock the wind out of you by jamming the lap bar into your stomach. It's the perfect way for a coaster this bad to end. Wildcat has 2,746 feet or 837 meters of pain. This kitty has claws. Sharp, painful claws. The one redeeming quality about Wildcat is that the coaster does look great. The coaster is a white support structure and I'm a sucker for that color on a classic wood coaster. Then the ride has orange rails, which is an odd color choice, but it complements the orange trains. These colors were selected since the park's mascot used to be Garfield. The entrance is also flamboyant, but I do love it. You enter under one of the ride's former trains, and then there are a half dozen signs for the coaster at this entrance. While it does seem overboard, it's very much necessary if you've been to late compounds. People struggle to find the entrance for this coaster, and maybe that's deliberate because it's so painful. The entrance is on the back midway, tucked next to the seating area for Pink's hot dogs. But the ride's placement in the center of the park is excellent. I love how it's there. Wildcat adds a lot of kinetic energy to the park as the midway circles around the attraction. And it also helps create one of the most iconic entrances in the industry. The way the lift hill is centered with the main entrance is picture perfect. So what would I rate Wildcat? Since this is not a fashion show, I'm going to give this coaster a 1 out of 10. Wildcat is wretched. The coaster is brutally rough. And even if it weren't violent, the layout is terrible. Before the retracking, Wildcat probably would have been about a 3 out of 10. But like I said earlier, it performed the rare feat of becoming worse after a retracking. And a full retracking, no less. I feel bad trashing Wildcat given its historical significance and the amount of effort Lake Compounds has put into fixing the ride, but the reality is that Wildcat is one of the worst wood coasters in the world. So those are my thoughts on Wildcat, the classic but painful wood coaster at Lake Compounds. What are your thoughts on this ride? Do you hate it as much as me? I would love to hear your thoughts about this coaster down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.